This is the iPhone 15 Pro. You might initially think, oh, here we go again with Apple trying to get another thousand dollars plus for what seems like the same phone as last year. I had the same reservations. However, after using this phone for the past 30 days, I'm starting to believe that it could potentially be the best iPhone ever despite some of its immediate flaws. Right, so maybe the most important question for you is, should you upgrade to the iPhone 15 Pro? Well, let's answer this question and of course roll the cinematic. Recent reports and discussions on the internet have raised concerns about potential overheating issues with the iPhone 15 Pro. Users and tech enthusiasts have taken to forums and social media to share their experiences with some claiming that the device can become noticeably warm during intensive tasks such as extended gaming sessions or 4K video recording. In my own experience over the past 30 days, I didn't notice any overheating issues during my day-to-day -day use and even when I played demanding games like Genshin Impact. The only time I experienced any overheating issues is when I first set up the phone, but apart from that, I've had no problems with this phone. When it comes to design, the most noticeable visual change is the smoothing of the sharp edges that were present in previous generations. This means that the iPhone 15 Pro now has a notably different and more comfortable feel. While the iPhone 15 Pro, like the rest of the line, still retains its flat sides that wrap around the phone's edge, there is now a subtle rounding where there used to be almost no curvature. The Pro line also introduces a new titanium frame, which significantly reduces the weight of the iPhone 15 Pro compared to its stainless steel predecessor. Additionally, the iPhone 15 Pro retains the dynamic island and rear diffused glass panel from the previous year's model. The rear glass panel is now more straightforward to replace, significantly reducing the cost of repairs compared to the previous generation. However, the only thing I don't like about this new titanium frame is the fact that it's a fingerprint magnet. I don't know if this is just for this colorway because I think this is a nice colorway, the blue titanium, but um, apart from that, it's clean. It's really, really nice. So Apple consistently introduces new updates to their iPhones, often bringing innovative features aimed to reshape the industry. Last year, we saw the introduction of Dynamic Island, and this year, it's all about the new action button. This customizable button lets you trigger up to nine different actions. The switch to the action button does change how you check whether the phone is set to ring or silent. If you're happy switching between ring and silent via on-screen controls, the button can instead serve as a way to enter predefined focus modes. The second major design change is a USB-C port, which replaces the lightning port on every model in the iPhone 15 lineup. I think this update is long overdue, so it's great to see that Apple have finally done this. As for how this transition from lightning to USB-C affects the functionality of the iPhone 15 Pro. It doesn't impact charging speed, sadly. So obviously it's about time that Apple finally add USB-C ports to their phones. Like I just think we should have had this about a few years ago now, but I think we should also have fast charging now because even in Android phones that cost around 250 pounds, if you're in the US, $300, you got fast charging. You know what I mean? I, I just don't understand how fast charging is not a feature yet with the iPhone. Then again, you know, Apple, I guess they take their time and probably when they do want to do fast charging, let's say probably next year with the iPhone 16, they'll probably do, try to do something that their competitors are not doing. They'll probably take it up a notch. So whatever they do with fast charging will probably shake up the industry essentially. So yeah, we'll have to wait until next year, I guess, hopefully. The iPhone 15 Pro retains its predecessor's excellent 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED screen with Apple's motion technology, which varies the refresh rate between 1 Hz and 120 Hz, depending on the content displayed. As mentioned, the Dynamic Island digital cutout is also present here and comes with every phone in this lineup. The display is beautiful and very responsive. The tinier bezel instantly makes it more immersive too. So when it comes to the camera, the phone boasts a 48 megapixel main, 12 megapixel ultra wide and 12 megapixel 3 telephoto lens. On the front, the iPhone 15 Pro retains a familiar 12 megapixel true depth camera found on the iPhone 14 Pro. This camera is well regarded in the industry for capturing lifelike colors, and it also seamlessly integrates with popular social apps and filters used on platforms like Snapchat. Apple have reserved the 5X optical zoom telephoto camera for the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but do I wish the iPhone 15 Pro had the Pro Max's 5X optical telephoto? Of course, but I imagine Apple are probably saving that for the 16 Pro next year. In well-lit settings, the iPhone 15 Pro excels at capturing a lot of details using all three of its cameras. I would have liked to see Apple 
example include higher resolution sensors for the ultra wide and telephoto cameras, similar to what Google has done with the Pixel 8 Pro. I think this would have provided some more flexibility beyond what the wide camera offers. Any opportunity I've had to take a photo with this phone, I've honestly taken it. Um, I've been around London, I've just wanted to see how rich the colors can come out and it's, it's pretty amazing, you know. I feel this is where a lot of Android phones fall short. You know, they may have fast charging or like 120 hertz uh, refresh rate on the screen. I feel like Apple are at the forefront of cameras, you know, or camera quality. Under the hood, the iPhone 15 Pro is powered by Apple's latest chip, the A17 Pro, which makes it one of the fastest phones in the market right now. The A17 Pro is more than a simple upgrade compared to the A16 Bionic. Inside the A17 Pro is a new CPU, new GPU, and a new two times faster newer engine, and it runs at a higher clock speed compared to the A16. The phone's performance truly shines when it comes to gaming. Console quality games like Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 4 Remastered will be coming to the App Store over the next couple of months and will be able to run at 30 frames per second. Since these titles are not currently available, I decided to test the A17 Pro by playing one of the most demanding games you can run on the iPhone, Genshin Impact. Usually I like to play for around half an hour and throughout my session, the iPhone ran incredibly smooth and I didn't face any overheating issues either. I'm very excited to see what console quality games come to the App Store in the future and how well they could potentially run on the iPhone 15 Pro. When it comes to performance, this iPhone has performed flawlessly. It's been an absolute joy to just use this thing. Like I said, I've been playing Genshin Impact and it's been really, really fun because I'm a console gamer. So I'm used to frame rates of at least 60 frames per second. And um, this phone plays Genshin Impact pretty well. There were no issues, like I said earlier. So literally no gripes from me. So over the past 30 days, I would say on average, the battery life usually lasts for around 11 hours. So pretty much a full day for me. But even though Apple have finally made a switch to USB-C, there hasn't been a change in peak charging speeds. But regardless, real world recharge times should prove sufficient for most people. In testing, the Pro surpassed 50% charge in 30 minutes, with a full charge taking around one and a half hours. For people who tend to hold onto their iPhones for extended periods, the 15 offers a new charging optimization feature. This feature allows you to establish a maximum charge limit of 80%, which is designed to extend the long-term health and capacity of the battery. So should you consider purchasing the iPhone 15 Pro? Well, if you're in the market for one of the most powerful smartphones available, especially if you're a photography enthusiast or someone who appreciates top tier camera quality, and if you're into filmmaking, then this phone might be the perfect choice for you. On the other hand, if you're budget conscious, prioritize exceptional battery life, or require a telephoto camera, this phone may not align with your needs. For additional tech reviews, be sure to explore my latest review comparing the Xbox Series X to the Xbox Series X. I'll see you there.